In the last video, I made the fixture that holds all the frame components in the proper location. This time, we'll cut the monocoque elements and curve tubes to fit. The seat tube needs to be notched at a 12 degree angle where it meets the housing for the rear shock. I'm using a strip of metal to mark the location of the notch. The C-tube is held in the milling machine vise, and I'm using a square to make sure it's properly aligned. I'm using a digital level to set the part at a 12 degree angle. A hole saw is placed in the mill and centered on the part. The cut is started off the mark, and the milling machine table is moved to bring the cut to the line. Now the plunge cut is made with the hole saw. The fit is nearly perfect. I'm using a stainless steel brush to clean the joint for welding. The joint is tack welded in several places. With the tacks completed, the joint is welded fully. The monocoque seat tube cover is fitted next. It needs to be notched too. This is a very fragile part and it needs special fixturing to be cut on the mill. I've made a slug that fits tightly inside. It has a threaded stud that sticks out. The slots cut in the slug allow the chunks to fall out as the part is cut. I made a very simple fixture that holds the part at the proper angle. There's one more piece that allows this to be held in the milling machine vise. I'm using kerosene as a cutting fluid. You can see how well the parts fit. Now I'll we'll tack weld the part into place. Next, I'll lay out the cuts on the curved monocoque section. The monocoque is aligned with the rear edge of the pivot. I'm marking a line parallel with the shock housing. The wooden slug is slid forward, allowing me to cut grooves for removing the waste. Now the slug is tapped back into place. The part is held in the vise, keeping the scribed line vertical, and now the plunge cut is made. Stopping to remove the waste so it doesn't clog the hole saw. To lay out the bottom cut, I'm positioning machinist's blocks so they touch the pivot center line. Now the pivot housing is removed and a spacer is used to hold the monocoque at the proper height. I'm using threaded rod to push the monocoque tightly against the shock housing. Now I can mark the vertical center line of the cut parallel with the blocks and I'll use a dial caliper to measure the center right to left. I'm marking the location of the cut so I'll know how deep to make the waste removal slots. Now the part is placed in the mill, centered on the spindle, and clamped to the milling machine table.
Even though the hole saw has coarse teeth, it cuts the thin aluminum cleanly because of the tightly fitted slug. The slug is tapped out, the part is deburred, and the fit is checked. Tight fits are essential for good welds on thin sections like this. I'm using the same strategy for laying out and cutting the monocoque section for the bottom bracket. The careful layout and cutting ensures tight fits. The lower curved tube is positioned in the fixture and aligned with the bottom of the swing arm pivot. I'm doing a rough layout so I'll know how deep to make the waste relief cut. The round tube has enough stiffness that it doesn't need a slug inside. I'm aligning the outside of the hole saw with the inside wall of the tube. Again, I'll make a plunge cut. The test fit shows good alignment, so it's time to lay out the front of the tube. I'm using a plate to lay out a straight line on the tube, spaced one inch away from the center line of the head tube. A rough cut is made on the bandsaw, and a disc sander is used to sand right up to the line. The tube is positioned in the mill, making sure the cut end is precisely vertical, and it's clamped securely. I'm using an edge finder to center the spindle over the cut end of the tube. And then I move the table one inch to the center of the cut for the head tube. Now the cut can be made. A bandsaw is used to remove the bulk of the waste and a disc sander is used to round the ends of the notched area. I made a special dolly to fit inside the tube. This eases the process of rounding the end of the tube where it fits against the head tube. Now I can pack all the components together on the fixture. With the tacks completed, I'll finish weld each joint on the bench so I can rotate the parts to allow full access for all the joints. The filler rod is 53-56 alloy, 332nd inch diameter, or 2.4 millimeters.
With the monocoque fully welded, all the parts go back on the fixture and I can check the fit of the round tubes. Now these are ready to be tack welded and then finish welded. Welding round tubes is challenging. Your hands are constantly moving, keeping the torch at the correct angle and feeding the rod into the puddle. I'm using a 2% seriated tungsten, 332nd inch diameter, or 2.4 millimeters, sharpened to a fine point. The last welds will join the top tube and the down tube to the head tube. And here's the completed frame with all the accessories added. It was a great honor for me to help Spencer Aoyang develop the prototypes for this striking design.